In this session, I'm going to take you through window clearing for emergency egress when deploying a personal escape, personal safety, or versatile rescue system. Now this is a component that's often neglected or taken for granted when training with these types of systems, but it can be a critical element if you're trapped in a room that's rapidly approaching flashover and you need to get out in a hurry. If the window that you're going to exit from is still intact, the faster you can take it out and clear it of any hazards or obstructions, the better off you're going to be. Now as firefighters, we obviously can be faced with a variety of different styles, shapes, and sizes of windows. From casements, to slide-bys, to single and double hunks. It's the single and double hung styles that I want to focus on because they can involve more steps to clear out. Simply because of the additional framework. Specifically, the middle rails of the top and bottom sash. Now common sense would dictate that if you're presented with a window where the bottom section of glass is large enough, where you can take it out and not have to worry about getting your helmet or the cylinder of your SUV hung up on the framework as you're bailing out, then that's what you're going to do. However, where single and double hums can be problematic is where the height of the middle rails of the top and bottom sash don't allow that. In that type of situation, you're going to want to break out all the framework. And you've probably heard this analogy before. We want to make that window into a door. We want to clear out any hazards or obstructions that could slow down or impede our egress. Now, too often on fire scenes, I see where guys have taken out the glass at the top and bottom sashes and left the framework in place. So you see shards of glass going all around the perimeter of the window, top and bottom, and the middle rails are still in place. Now that might be effective to ventilate that room or compartment, but if firefighters need to get in in a hurry, or even worse, out in a hurry, that's going to be problematic. Remember, we want that window so that we can literally walk in or out without getting hung up on anything. How effective you're going to be at taking a window out is going to be based on three factors. First is how the window is constructed. Second is your method of attack. And third is the type of tool you use. When we look at construction first, for example, if you're dealing with a single lightweight glass pane window, something that you can find in an older home, those are going to be a lot easier to take out than if you're presented with a double or a triple thermal pane. Remember, we could also have storm windows and screens that have to be cleared. And finally, you got to take into account what the framework is constructed of. Remember, we could have plastic or vinyl windows, you could have wood, or you could have metal, in some cases which can be quite formidable. In the end though, if there's one common denominator, we want to try to avoid attacking the window in individual sections. You want to try to attack the window as a whole. Remember, your goal is to do the most amount of destruction with the least amount of effort in the shortest time frame possible. And the one technique that I found that works best for that is directly attacking the middle rails. Whether you attack the center first or you attack the sides. You're coming in with a downward blow. That fractures that top glass, hopefully the bottom glass as well, while compromising the frame, making that easier to clear. If we have a single hump, remember those can be a little easier because the top sash is fixed. So when you break out the glass, the side rails and the top rail a lot of times will stay in place. When we have a double hung, remember both the top sash and bottom sash are movable. So when you make that, that blow to the middle rails, you're going to be busting the glass and bringing down the framework. So you want to make sure that's out of your way as well. It's going to require a few more steps than a single hung. But the last thing you want is that framework to be coming down and dropping on you like a guillotine and stopping your egress. The last factor you want to take into consideration is the type of tool you use. And that comes down to simple physics, or the fact that force equals mass for the weight of your tool times acceleration. In street language, the heavier weight tool is going to do more damage than a lighter weight one. And that's one of the reasons I'm a big believer in bringing in the irons. When you look at an average 30 inch halogen bar, it's going to weigh anywhere from 9 to just under 11 pounds. Pair that up with your striking tool, a flathead or similar style tool that should at least weigh 8 pounds. Both those tools together or individually can do a lot of damage. In the end though, regardless of the construction of the window, your method of attack or the type of tool you use, your goal to take that window out should be 15 seconds or less. And that comes down to one undeniable fact. And that is, if you're trapped in a room that's already involved in fire, or fire is rapidly extending into that room, 
and you're unable to compartmentalize or isolate yourself, as soon as you start that breach, you're creating a flow path. So you're going to be feeding that fire air, which is going to further intensify it. And then you're going to draw all that heat, smoke, and fire right at you. So the faster you can take that window out and bail out immediately afterwards, the better off you're going to be. And that leads me to the last thing that you should consider, and that is how you have your system set up. Remember, there's the integrated system, or one that is pre-attached to your belt or harness, or the independent setup, one that is not pre-attached to your belt or harness. The big advantage of the integrated system is you're just reaching into your bag or pocket, pulling out the lead end, which should ideally have a hook, and you're ready to exit. The independent system is going to require additional time. You're going to have to hook up to your belt or harness and deal with any problems. So always tell firefighters in training, if you have a company that is split, some have an integrated system, some have an independent setup, the firefighters that are integrated are the ones that are going to take out the window. That's going to buy more time for the firefighters that have the independent setup to make that connection to their belt or harness and deal with any problems. That is, if they're lucky to have that time. I myself have an independent system. Again, there's advantages and disadvantages to each setup. So I practice multitasking. I pull my system out and I make a hookup as I'm making my approach to the window. So once the window's clear, I'm ready to exit. Again, you don't want to be standing there too long because of that flow path. In the end though, whatever you do, you just don't want to watch a video. You just don't want to have an idea of what you're going to do. You want to have a plan and you want to practice that plan to see what's going to work and what isn't going to work for you. Now that's a lot of information in a short period of time. I want to get into the demonstrations. We're going to show you four window clears. They're all going to be double hungs of similar style and construction. We're going to show you two where we attack the sides of the middle rail and two where we attack the center of the middle rails. In the end, which works better than the other is more so based on how the window is constructed. It's something that when you have the chance and the ability to get acquired structures, you want to practice yourself to see what techniques are going to work for you. So let's take a look at the demos.